I had never seen this, the Unix operating system. God bless the YouTube. <laughs> I love calling it that. This is the greatest video of all time. <laughs> that is not hyperbole at all. And, and thanks to the wonder of the internet, we're able to see the usual way to get a large computer application developed. Watch the pauses as he reads the teleprompter. A big team of people working in close coordination. Listen. Most of the time this works surprisingly well, but it does have its problems. And <laughs> large projects tend to get done poorly. They take a long time. They consume an astonishing amount of money. I cannot. And in many cases, the individual team members are dissatisfied. This. So everybody in the computing business is constantly searching for ways to Wait. do a better job of developing for a better job. applications. It's like, as he's talking, there aren't likely to be he's any talking final like answers. a he's talking like a 1970s VT100 terminal over a modem. We solutions, we try even more ambitious objectives. <laughs> But there are some things that can be done to make life easier for everybody on a large programming project. Pause. A good programming environment <laughs> helps a lot. And in the next few minutes, we're going to show you some of the properties of the Unix operating system. We're going to show you some of the properties make it a good programming environment of the Unix operating system. Purposes. In Bell Labs, as in many industries, almost everyone has some kind of involvement with software. Okay, Either John. Actually, producing software, and that is their job. Or they are Look at those case statements. Software, or they use Look at those software. bash sh fact, positive Bell shell Labs, case statements. About fifty percent of the people are actually producing software, <laughs> and everyone else has some kind of involvement with it. In fact, that's one of our worst problems today. Is there is a crying need for useful software to do effective jobs. We just do not have enough people to write all that software. Keeping large amounts of software working and keeping it working. But in the you know what's crazy? It was, it what's crazy is how much how much one seat of Unix costs. It's like three hundred dollars or something. You build hardware and send it out. Uh, you may have to fix it because it breaks. But <laughs> you don't demand, for example, I just love that I love these like smug seventies AT and T Bell Labs guys. do a completely different function. But people do that of software all of the time. I'm smarter than There's you. A continual demand for changes, enhancements, yeah. new features that people find necessary once they get used to a system. In other words, we put the system out there, people get used to it, okay. their jobs change, they come back hey, with look, there's more paper. demands for different there's sorts paper on that guy's of desk. features in the system. The result is there's no way to get perfect requirements in the first place. And that means that we have to build the software to be very change tolerant. Agile programming invented in 1970. After we wrote it. There are a was it like 900? Oh my gosh. One was is it? to make the software it's fairly crazy. clear and easy to read and understand and change. And you do that with some of the current popular structured programming techniques. Another way is to write many, many small modules of code. That way, small when you modules have a change, of code, guys. You only throw out a Those few commands that we write all the time. Make changes in a few modules. I gotta do. Rather than in thousands this has got to be a tradition. I have to like. What we should be doing in the computing business is trying to raise the, the level at we work. Look at the keyboard. So that a programmer can write a few lines of code. I'm like, what is this for? <laughs> many, many instructions in the machine. That way, when changes need to be made, one just changes a few lines of code rather than thousands and thousands of them. Thousands of in lines of code. Month, Fred Brooks estimates that Here we go. 5,000 staff years of effort to produce the operating system for IBM's 360 series computers. 5,000 man Clearly, years. Nobody is going to do that sort of thing very often. Certainly not for every new type of hardware or for every new class of application. Someone Here he is. That software the smartest guy in the whole show. And, and to me, this conveys this picture of a great wall of software up there that you Here have he to is. overcome to get anything done. The uh, god of Unix. Of truth in the remark, anyway. Um, if you stop to look, many, many operating systems seem to spend at his height a fraction of their time and effort, not in helping you, but in impeding you, in, in making your job difficult, sort of providing obstacles to be overcome. When Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie started building the Unix system in 1965, <laughs> they found a structure which simplified. When Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. 
Oh, I know. and Ritchie were aiming to keep their system simple, and they found there a they are. primitives that enabled them to do a great deal with a very few primitives. What a bunch of nerds. The Unix system is made up sort of of three layers, if you like. The central layer, <laughs> the kernel, <laughs> is the thing that controls the resources of the machine. Then wrapped around that, at least... It is, is it not? Conceptually, is something called the shell, which <laughs> is the interface between most users and the kernel part. It sits there and waits for you to type commands at it, and then it interprets them. And then around that is sort of an, yet another There's layer. There's the shell, guys. Are useful programs. This is still like a useful video. Compilers for programming languages and document formatting programs. It took two days to render that graphic, by the way. And what you can do is to think of the Unix system programs basically as in some sense the building <laughs> blocks with which you can create things. Building and blocks. The thing that distinguishes the Unix system from many other Pipes. systems is the degree to which those building blocks can be glued together in a variety of yeah. different ways, not just obvious ways, but in many cases very unobvious ways to get different jobs done. And that's what uh, made these the that's what made Unix brilliant. I, brilliant. I think the notion it's so funny because it's so common now. Fundamental contribution is the system is you so can common now take we take it for granted. A bunch of programs, but it had to be programs, invented. Stick them together end to end so that the data. The idea from the one of on the, the left, pipeline the had to be right. invented. And the system itself looks after all of the connections, <laughs> all of the synchronization. Standard error and standard out. from the one into it's the a part other. of every programs computer ever built since then. Don't know anything then. about the connection as far as they're and concerned. It had to be invented. To the terminal. But let me give you an example um, of how this works. But, uh, here's my favorite. My favorite quote is coming as up. As I mentioned, has, is used a lot for document preparation. <laughs> kinds of things. Uh, programs for helping you type letters or produce technical papers or write books. In all of those things, of course, people, when they're typing into the machine, make spelling mistakes. So let's see how we could use some of these building block notions in practice to help you develop a program for uh -oh. finding spelling mistakes. Suppose I take a sentence. This is a sentence which is in a paper Here we go. that He's gonna show John us how to do Unix. I wrote with those boots uh, some years ago now. All the greatest geeks are like outdoors guys. A couple of spelling mistakes in there. Now, suppose that we wanted to find uh, the spelling mistakes using. We got to find those spelling mistakes. Well, basically, what we would do, the simplest thing I can think of, is to split the Alexa sentence there <laughs> into words. Individual How do words, I and spell the words against a dictionary? And every time we find a word which is in that sentence but not in a dictionary, it's at least a plausible contender for being a spelling mistake. I know he could wield it. That's what I'm saying. What I want to show is that you can do that using just existing Unix programs, just gluing them together. Gluing to together them. existing Suppose Unix programs. We say, first, we'll take a he program means commands. called Make Words, and we'll run Look, that. On there's the a sentence. pipe. Look at now, that prompt. I want to make a prompt like him. Up All right, wait. One I'm going to make my prompt like his prompt. Now I'll take the output. He and simplified I'll type his prompt for you guys. Another program. He didn't want to confuse you. Converted into lowercase. The reason I want I to convert it into lowercase is that my dictionary there. doesn't have any capitalizations, and so words like Bell and Unix now I, I have, look, I have Ken Ritchie's. Here, would show up as spelling mistakes unless I did this. Or Ken Thompson. Now, I have Ken Thompson's The next thing prompt. I want to do, my dictionary make it blue. is like sorted make it blue. in alphabetical yes. order as dictionaries are. Oh, gosh. And so it's a lot easier that. for me to compare the words of my document to the words in the dictionary if they're sorted. So I'm going to just run them into sort. All right, how's that? And Wait. finally, if you look at it carefully, it doesn't show up very easily Oh, here, man, it's too dark. But there are, in fact, there is a duplicate word there. Systems appears twice. Mm. And in a real document, words like T-H-E would show up many times. So we'd like to get rid of <laughs> duplicates. So let's throw that through another program called Unique. Unique that has a U and so an E on so the end. What we've we've got the words of my document, in this case the sentence, one word per line, Damn. In lowercase, neatly sorted, and all of the duplicate words thrown away. So there's only one word one instance of each different word. And then what I'm going to do is run it into <laughs> one last program called Mismatch, Ooh. which will simply print all of the words that came down this pipeline and print out the ones that were in I'm going to use RGB can. Is that okay? So what we have here is five separate programs cooperating to do this job. And in one giant pipeline. Now, if you look at the list that came out, you'll see that indeed we got laboratories and provide, which were our two spelling mistakes. And of course, we got two other words as well. And this tells you not only what, what's good about the approach, but also what's bad about it. Um, time sharing is not a spelling mistake, but it's a perfectly fine example yes, of it is. jargon, the sort of thing that means something to everybody in the computer business. It means nothing whatsoever to people who are not computer types. Mm. And the word Unix is a fine example 
of something that's not going to be found in a normal dictionary. Uh oh. So, what do we do? First, we take the misspelled words and we go back to the original document and we correct them so we don't have any spelling mistakes. Secondly, we take the words that, Damn. like time sharing and Unix, that are not spelling mistakes but which showed up here, and we put them back into our dictionary so that the next time somebody has a document that contains Unix or time sharing, they don't show up as spelling mistakes. So we've not only done our own job, but we've improved the tool that we're using in the process. So you notice that Indeed. I did that whole job without writing any programs at all. The whole thing is cobbled together out of programs that already existed. And all I did was to use the fact I'm that changing my prompt to the I system colon. provides this mechanism with the pipeline so that I can take programs and stick them together one after another to get my job done. And I think this is one of the reasons why the system is so productive, that there's a yes, large collection of things that people have already built that we use and as we build our new things then they become part of the this is of the unix people philosophy people can build on. not build decade, some big massive piece of crap program that can load node.js plugins matching algorithms that are useful for locating Ooh, patterns pattern and matching guys many of these algorithms algorithms have been developed using insights obtained from theory obtained by studying automata and language theory by studying automata and As language theory our knowledge of automata is a big old word that'll scare them increases we can very quickly take this knowledge and package it in the form of unix programs and we can spread these unix programs that's the real to the entire community very quickly very quickly yeah they're teletypes man so much money now serious swagger Unix systems has many features which oh here we go make it easier for the this is this is my favorite quote coming up these include here's my favorite quote formatless files the hierarchical directory structure here we go. the ability to pipeline the output of one command as the input of another creator of C device independent IO all of these things is programming considerably easier than on most other systems the heart oh, of the system is really the file system. The, the heart of the system is the file system. For Everything's a file in Unix. And Everything's reason, a file. One of the reasons the system works as well as it does is yeah, the file you do. System and by that well guy and that guy. And many systems, you have to say an awful lot about a file. He actually can Ken's still alive. He helped write where Go. it is and how big and it Unicode. Is, what kind of information it's going to. He was on the Go project. All kinds of things and and Greismeyer. Completely irrelevant. Here, you don't have to do any of that. A file is as big as it is. It doesn't matter where it is as long as you know what it's called. And so you basically don't have to think of any of those complexities that you have in other systems. When nope. you want information in a file, you put it there. When you want it back, you get it out again. And you don't have to think about size or number of records or number of fields or anything like that. That's really germane to your program. <laughs> For most purposes, it's <laughs> utterly irrelevant. A file is simply a sequence of oh, size. Oh, Its main attribute is its size. By think, contrast, in more conventional systems... Wait, I think I got this wrong. Uh, file has dozen or so attributes. I got the name. I get to these guys mixed up. Specify or create a file. It takes endless amounts of chit chat. If you want a Unix system file, you simply ask for a file. I'm sorry. He looks so scary. Wherever you want a file. Yeah, I'll give you a link. The Unix system consists of a hierarchy of directories. Hierarchy. A directory is simply a file that contains the names of either other directories or files, and this whole thing goes oh, on recursively. Thing. When you log into a Unix system, Sorry. you normally are sitting in a place that's called your home directory, or your user's directory. And I can say PWD, which means print the name of my Ooh, working directory. Ooh, PWD. That's where I am. It says at the moment that I'm in user PWD. Still relevant, guys. And that's where I start when I log in. Now, I can go up a level in that. I can change Gosh, to it. parent level. And now, if I print my working directory, I'm in slash user. And I can go up one more level to the root of the whole file system. Let me go back down to BWK, BWK, and I can list the direct the files that I have in that directory. And I find there, this probably among better. other things, a directory called TV. And heck? I can list the files that are there, and I'll find, among other things, the sentence that we printed in the spelling mistake finding program. Let me look at that, and sure Ooh, enough, look at that. there it is. See, look, he alias so P can to see Echo. The file system hierarchy. Did you see that? It possible for users to organize information into a totally natural grouping and to go up or down the Unix quickly and easily. The Unix system interface for most people is through a program called the shell or the command interpreter. Basically, hey, it's simply a program the command interpreter. that watches what you type 
and he does have style as for his time to run particular programs. He's really making now, sense too. Magic the way he talks, running programs. The programs that you run are actually just the names of files in the file system. The shell searches yep. in the file system in a particular way to find a file whose name is the name of the program that you think you're running, and it goes. Yeah, and come on, give me it. my favorite quote. Where's my quote? I'm gonna have to watch it. And I'm gonna like fact, mark it's not it. Possible for you as a user just by executing a program to tell how that particular program look at has that been look at that swagger example, it might have been written in a language like look at as a keyboard C, on it his have, fact, lap written as something like the spell program that we talked about earlier which is a combination of other programs stuck together with pipes or some similar this, thing there's a smooth expression all put in a single it file kind of as <laughs> a shell sequence or a sequence so of commands <laughs> what Brian did earlier was he typed all the commands the the five program names there you go uh, for his spelling checker Ooh, on look, one line using the pipeline facilities. Now, using, nice, a pipeline facility. You check using a pipeline uh, facility. Using a pipeline facility. And you don't want to have to type that. The number of the big commands. words so being used. All of these commands in a file. For simple things we use all the time. When uh, I type the name of that file, I want you to execute the commands that are inside that execute file. Execute the Let commands. Let me show you an example of this. Here's an example. We have a program called spline which, uh, fits uh, curves to a set of data points and I've got a set of five data points that we're going to see what the curve looks like I'm going to run spline through uh, a program that turns this uh, is this pretty into graphics, I was impressed by this I will admit. Graph, and I'm going to run that through a, spe a special program Check it. that turns the graphic language into uh, something specific for this terminal I only need to type plot. You'd probably blow your terminal up today. Because inside the file plot is the string of commands. Ooh, she has a dollar a sign. Check it. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Terminal. Actually plots the it on the terminal and everything. commands in files and only have to type the file name to get these commands executed. Did you just hear her? Not the dot sh easier. suffix. You're doing things that are not the interpreter space or Python space. Uh, long lists of things. This makes our life much easier and allows us to tailor our environment for the way we want to work. Yeah. Oh, here Another we go. Nice here we go. Of the Unix programming environment oh, here we go. The concept of input-output redirection. Normally, when you type a command, the output from it goes to your terminal, and the input comes from your keyboard. It's so funny how relevant this is. However, the shell can be told by a simple notation that when you run a program, you wish the output to be directed into a file or that the input be taken from a file. For example, to oh, print crap. the output of my spelling program. So, so this is like this is like high-end corporate training, right? Here. They probably had to pay money to pay to watch this terminal, training. All I have to do to do is shell redirection. Say my spell. My spell sentence greater than greater than device line printer. There, I want to do it. I want to do it. Sentence and the output goes into a go. file, what looks like a file, except that it's Something. actually a file that causes the line printer to spring into action Ooh, and print my. Ooh, but I don't have my line printer attached device on the line printer. I could send it to my many systems, redirection audio of input and output is literally impossible because the programs have wired into them the notion that they have to read <laughs> or write the user's terminal. I don't even know no what Window Manager is. I don't use a Window Manager. Do that. Here, that is not the case. Here, any program it's can have its input and output manager. redirected because the input and output <laughs> redirection is handled not by the individual Good one, program, Jenny. but by the shell. <laughs> and so that way it applies to all programs without any exception at all. And in fact, this goes a little further than you might expect because not only are parts of the disk files as they are in the, system, the very end but in addition, quote. the I.O. devices, the peripheral devices connected do, to yeah, the computer are also files in the file system. For example, the line printer and the tape drive and even the thing that dials <laughs> telephone numbers <laughs> yes, are it all does, mind devices later. in the file system. Isn't that the cool? The program that will copy information from one disk file to another disk file will also copy information from a disk file oh, I have to one. the line I have printer one. Watch. from the magnetic tape drive to the printer. The same program, Watch. exactly. I can use the FIFO. A good operating system Echo. is easiest for a programmer to use. If the programming language comes the guy who reads from the teleprompter. fits with the style of the system. So along the way in the course of the Unix system development, Dennis Ritchie created the C language. C is a very nice high-level language Boom. with many Boom. of the modern programs. Boom! Content. Right there from his own mouth. What did he call it? C is a very nice... This is going in my quotes. This is going in my quotes right there. C is a very nice 
high level language <laughs> in 196 whatever this is 70 okay wait that's got to go in my quotes where is my quotes i got to i got to put that in right now i'm like i know <laughs> for the win quotes dennis ritchie wait here we go <laughs> c is a very nice you heard his own mouth say it. It was. Back then it was like assembly. Oh, yes, he did. This is like, C is a very nice, high-level language. <laughs> Dennis Ritchie. Did I spell his name right? I don't want to get it wrong. I think I did. I think I got it wrong. I feel bad. I should know. I'm, I mean, no disrespect. He's dead now, but. Is it? See, I you can tell. Thank you for that, Jenny. You probably know him or somebody probably knows him. It's going to get mad at me. There we go. Dennis Ritchie. Uh, they made Java to be a higher level language than C. Uh, yeah, I got higher every year. I mean, you got to understand. They wrote C to write Unix. Yeah, that's a fact. They they wrote the first version of Unix entirely in assembly. Think about that for a second. They wrote the first version of Unix entirely in assembly. And they, they're like, man, we can't do this. And then they wrote the C language to write Unix. And they wrote Unix with C because it was much higher level than assembly. Structs in it. I gotta hear it again, though. A disk file to the line printer, comes. or from the magnetic tape drive to the printer. Magnetic tape drive. We saw those exactly. yesterday. A good operating system is easiest for a program. Good operating use. system. Pause. If the program language fits with the style of the system. <laughs> so along the way, in the course of the Unix system development, Dennis Ritchie created the C language. C is a very nice high-level language with many of the modern programming constructs in it. The thing that's very important about it oh, is it's not Richie that saying it, it lets you avoid Damn the details it. of the machine Damn it. when you want to. Def but I got foiled. I was foiled. Richie didn't actually say that. This this guy said it, who is probably important that I don't know. And Damn sometimes it. when you're writing an operating system. Oh, I can't I cannot do the quote attribution. My quote attribution is is invalid. Um who is this dweeb? This pedantic bearded Unix looking down at me, dweeb. He has a name. Wait, where are we right now? I'll come back, I promise. 1946. Okay, so. John R. Mashey. I should probably know who he is, but I don't. John R. You think Unix? You think Unix Linux users? Unix users are bad. Talk about 1970s C programmers. You think Arch users are bad? So before Harry got to think, uh, uh, new, uh, new Dennis Ritchie. I've been defeated. I was so defeated. John Mashey, he's a big deal. You're going to prove to me that he's a big deal, and I'm going to feel like shit. <laughs> Sean Mashey, 1946, uh, director and entrepreneur, PhD in computer science. Of course he does. That's why he talks like that. The assist assembly language teaching software. Does this still exist? I want to use it. He worked at PWB Unix operating system at Bell Labs from 83, authoring the PWD shell. Mashey shell. There's a Mashey shell. Silicon Valley, of course. Uh, Jeff Goldblum, he kind of does. Uh, he joined MIPS. Oh, wow. He was working for MIPS. Okay. MIPS Risk Architecture. I bet Dennis would know him. We should probably talk to Dennis. He can do similar work for Silicon Graphics. Holy cow. He's a Silicon Graphics guy. A Numa Flex Modular Computer System, Numa Link. Uh, ended as VP and Chief Scientist. Mash was one of the founders of SPEC. AMCM, IEEE Micro. Hot Chips Venture Capitalist, of course he did. Uh, and a trustee of the Computer History Museum in 2008. Well, that's nice. 
Lifetime Achievement Award for Musnix. Holy cow. That's awesome. Skeptical Inquirer. He sounds like a skeptical. Um, Global Warming. Mashy blogs on... Oh, wow. He's still blogging. Hey, let's go read his blog. Wait. Found it in the blog. Global Warming. Okay, but I want to read it. I want to read the blog. Oh, there it is. Please be up. There it is. Wow, so Mashi is still around. Look at that. Thursday, June 18th. Well, I know because Thompson and those, and I mean, still around. They're, I, I hope they're, they're watching this. They're going to like say bad things about me. I don't mean any disrespect, guys. You have no idea how grateful we are for your work. <laughs> Seriously. We're just having fun. Uh, so, so yeah. And then you have, so yeah. Almost everyone has some kind of involvement with software. Software. Either they are actually producing software and that is their job, or they are. You can almost by use this video use as a training video about how to hold your body if you want everybody to think they're looking down on you. Everyone else has some kind of involvement <laughs> with it. In fact, that's one of our worst problems today. There is a crying need for useful software to do. He innovated use of the dollar sign. Seriously, that's pretty. That that's software. pretty cool, Jenny. Keeping large amounts of software working and keeping it working in the face of change is a big job. It takes a lot. No of mouse there. To do this. Now, software is different from hardware. When you build hardware and send <laughs> seriously, it out, uh, seriously, 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 do you see? It's almost like if you wanted a training video about how to. To, if if you want a condescending body language training video, this is it. Watch how he shakes his shoulders. <laughs> I mean, watch this. Watch how he holds himself. It takes a lot of skilled people to do this. Now, software is different from hardware. When you build hardware and send it out, <laughs> uh, you may have to fix it because it breaks. But like, you don't I'm, demand, every, for example, like that oozing, your radio suddenly I am turn smarter into a than you. And you don't demand that a piece of hardware suddenly do a completely different function. But people do that of software all of the time. All of the There's time. A continual demand Fully pronounced for changes, sentences. enhancements, new features that people nice find me. necessary once they get funny. used to a system. In other words, we put the system out there, people get used to it, their jobs yeah. change, they come back with more demands for different sorts <laughs> of, of features in the system. The result is there's no way to get perfect requirements in the first place. And that means that we have to build the software to be that very means. change tolerant because we do not want to throw the software away the year after we wrote it. I don't I don't know what I like more. The 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 guy who reads like with, with literally five second pauses off the Unix teleprompter who has like a sort of a, like a, a friendly demeanor, or the guy who's like talking as fast as he possibly can down to everybody <laughs> there are a couple ways to do that one is to make the software fairly <laughs> clear and easy to read and understand and change and you do that with oh, some of the current popular structured programming technique <laughs> another way is to write many many small modules oh, God, you guys are cracking that me way up. when you have a change perhaps you only throw that out way, a few small modules when you... or make changes in a few modules rather than in thousands and thousands of lines of code. Thousands what and thousands. Doing in the computing business is trying to raise the level at which we work <laughs> so that a programmer can write a few lines of code. That <laughs> this, is, this is what I want to do, okay? If, in, my, in my imaginary fictional science fiction, I would take Mr. Mashy and I would have him meet like, oh, I don't know, one of the like, one of the, like the really killer kick-ass coders for for like Witcher 3 or something like that who's written like thousands of lines of code and, and just have them like talk to each other. <laughs> so the guy just like <laughs> Oh, that'd be, it would be so funny. It's like, okay, who can who can out con let's say condescension. It's like, okay. <laughs> In this corner we have <laughs> Bashy and over here we have Okay, oh, oh, the condescension's coming up. The, the levels are coming up. It's a condescend off. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Newton Levis were fighting about how to figure out calculus. That's how that's now routinely taught to high school kids. Right. You know, but it, you know, it's the kind of thing. Yeah, we need this kind of stuff. You know, I'm not saying we don't need to make many, many instructions in the machine. That way, uh, when changes need to be made, one just changes a few wait, lines of code. I, I meant to go back here and I forgot to do that because I was having so much fun watching him. In the mythical man month, programmer to use if the programming language <laughs> fits with the style of the system. <laughs> the pauses. So along the way in the course of the, the pauses. development. Then okay, we're almost done. I got to go to bed. C is a very nice high-level language with many of very the nice modern high level programming language. constructs in it. The thing that's very important about it is that it lets you avoid you see, I love the New York in a corner. machine when you want to, but when you need to, and sometimes when you're writing an operating system, you really do need to, you can get at the details I wrote of the one. machine and <laughs> control everything. But you're not forced to do that, and that's important because that means you can write operating systems in this language and still have something that can be portable to other machines. Yeah. The Unix portable. system has been moved to many, many different portable. kinds of computers. <laughs> Again, that means that people can ignore the details. Port of port wait, 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 wait. So portable, portable cuts to, portable cuts to that. <laughs> portable. Port <laughs> I know, no, it's not. It's like portable cuts to this thing, man. <laughs> it's like two bit color. It's got it's green. It's got screen burn in, <laughs> but it's portable. It's got five chords coming out of it, an R, a G, and a B. <laughs> Actually, no, it doesn't even have RGB. Look at the pencil sharpener over here. Look at this thing, man. It's like an old school phone right here. I mean, I'm just having fun. But, you know, I lived through that time, so that's why I can laugh. It's the 80s portable event the size of a large suitcase. Oh, God. The Unix system has been moved to many, many different kinds of Many, computers. many. Again, a that means that people can ignore the details Look, of it's what a, spreadsheet. a machine is underneath and get on with their job. Dude, she's like... Now, no, so it's not a spreadsheet. Level, that was right. She was writing assembly. Language. She was writing assembly. Level, the shell programming language is very popular. Yes. In fact, on some machines, people find uh, the cool shell retro term. Yeah, I actually, needs. I did a they video of all the cool retro terms. They're super work. fun. They I, don't even have my, to go I did that in December. To a language at the level of, of C. You know what you can do with cool retro term? You can run Tmux from another window, and nobody will know. Programming environment. Programmers all over the world have imported or added their own languages. Oh so, for instance, Look you can find monitor. Fortran, Algol, Lisp, Algol, Basic. Lisp, in fact, Fortran, almost Lisp, any language basic. you can think of exists on some almost Unix every system language. somewhere. What's important about the Unix system is not so much what Richie and Thompson put into it as what they were able to leave I out. I wonder what they're actually saying because they know they're being filmed. Rather than produce a large number of primitives, each one complex, they were able to choose a small number of simple yeah. primitives which could be fitted naturally together <laughs> to accomplish don't. complex tasks. Well, this he made C, so he just may be a serial natural killer. and easy for people who create applications to produce applications in that same yeah, style. Yeah, it is, actually. Yeah. For example, as the scale of integration... Look at how fast the screen draws. Larger, we this find is... it necessary to have more and more sophisticated design aids to help people create large-scale integrated circuits. This, this, this actually blew me away. I, we're gonna, I'm kind of over the, this, but look at how fast it takes the screen to draw. Program designed to do everything. Both invented the Unix. Here have been producing <laughs> yeah. small packages, each designed Don't to make... do some individual function that's helpful. This, in is, this is actually super cool. So and these individual packages can be combined using shell procedures to design a part of it. Okay, what did he say? Using shell what? Using shell what? Did he say functions? That's helpful in the design of integrated circuits. Then these individual packages. Procedures. You guys even know what one is? Shell procedures. Procedures. To a part of a circuit <laughs> or a circuit, and the parts of a circuit can be combined to make a whole circuit. Pause. Steve Johnson is one of the people <laughs> who has been involved in this effort. <laughs> He this, is currently working on a program this, this called code, This code is actually pretty cool. How's it going, Cypher? And produces logic circuit designs as output. He's doing logic circuit because designs. 
is such a way of life. This guy is system. awesome. Over the years, we've developed tools that actually help he actually make other tools. They they made they took a program and they made it so that it would automatically find the best position for the logical uh, circuits on the circuit board. So they wrote code to find the best place to plot where the circuits on the circuit board are going to end up like back then that's like that i still think that's it may have taken forever for the thing to render but these involve things like he doesn't have a beard lexical analyzer oh generators. okay now i figured it out he's a developer guys it's like ganesh and gilfoil dinesh and gilfoil yep he's dinesh this is dinesh this is not gilfoil <laughs> The Gilfoil is the other guys, <laughs> except for the guy who made C. But I don't. He kind of expands the the bar, you know, because he made C, so he could make Unix, you know, with the other guys. So. And other programs that he help has us, no tie though. Uh, organize and develop. Moore's law would be slower without it. Uh, these tools have been used. Yeah, in it's of LGEM guys. It's pretty. Many it's, other applications. Silicon Valley is pretty rated them. Here we see the. Boolean equations. Boolean equations. Down here we have the equations for the. I can't see anything on that screen. <laughs> and the sum. I don't. I don't. I think he's the least stoned of them all. In the middle we have some Too descriptions much. as to no, how we would I like don't, the cell guys, to lay Guys, so, Silicon minute. Valley actually makes me cringe. I love Silicon Valley. Don't get me wrong, but they're. There are some bits in Silicon Valley that the whole time I'm like going, oh my God, do I really have to watch this? It's like so out of bounds. I mean, it's like not fun to watch. So I can't, no. No, wait till you're in college <laughs> and then watch it. Uh, it didn't, no, he did not blink. He definitely did not blink. Uh, my, I mean, seriously, you'll, 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 you'll be happy you waited. I mean, there's some stuff in that show that is just, Ugh, so cringy. In front of the first scene, actually, there's a, there's some dialogue that's not very good. You gotta understand, the people who wrote Silicon Valley are the same people who wrote uh, Beavis and Butthead for MTV. Yeah, you guys know Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Who on the phone of the ads a freak out? We're almost so done. We would like the two inputs on the left side. Oh, yeah. That's true. You could. The carry in on the bottom. I can't see anything. The carry out on the top. And the output on the right side. And I'm pretty sure he didn't use Emacs to edit that. The equations first have to be This just makes me want to learn logic. So that they can be more easily represented. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the similar. That's the Simpsons guy, right? Sub expressions in the input of a compiler. Noise. Input language. See, you guys know this the stuff. I don't. Let, yeah, some are read and processed by a program called Yak. Yak. Which was originally. Do you guys know Yak? Lex and Yak. Compilers, but has in fact been used in a large number of application programs. Lex so and Yak. Yak is based Lex on and the Yak. theory of this LALR. What, this is why I like parsing. peg parsing because it's like the next uh, generation when we actually have memory. It builds a small finite state machine, uh, <laughs> which is able to control it's the two access. It's two C's. Yak of the program which reads the input. That's how they would write Check languages. Accurately. And structure uh, the input. He dropped it from the year 2020. The can then go ahead and, and yep, perform my ACC. Uh, yep, Lex and Yak. Uh, there's peg and leg now, by the way. That, it's then necessary to worry about the geometric layout of the circuit. Uh, this is done yeah, yeah, in right. the next two portions of LGEN. The first program worries Elgin. about the ordering of these columns. I love this guy, but he's you can tell he's like saying, Can I please just go back uh, to coding? A technique <laughs> called draft partitioning. Can I to can you, attempt can you to please take the camera away? I, I really just want to code. What is in fact an extremely difficult problem <laughs> in theory. Yeah. After the <laughs> columns <laughs> have been ordered, <laughs> then the tracks <laughs> where the signals run are laid out as well. It's pretty cool, though. Program. This program he wrote is pretty and cool. Finally, for the time? For the in time? Sense, we now have the circuit designed, and it's simply a question yeah. of realizing it with the particular rules for our fabrication process. Uh, and that is done by a fourth program. 
Did you see him? Did you see him? He so looked off again, camera. We have an example. He looked off camera. Of taking a very complex dig dug problem, dividing it into pieces, <laughs> Mario levels, representing each piece for the separate program, and then using the facilities <laughs> of the Unix system to glue the pieces together into a coherent whole again. <laughs> Computing is going to be more and more wait, interwoven with people's wait. lives. That was the greatest comment ever. <laughs> you guys missed that's the best comment ever. I gotta pull that back up. That that perfectly captioned that thought. That totally perfectly captioned it. So, <laughs> where is it, Swazi? Jim, we're not, <laughs> we're not giving your your only bonus to scotch unless you finish your film for marketing. No, seriously, look look at Look, look at his, like, watch this. So, watch his, like, his, like, his, watch him look off camera like he's looking for the dog treat. I swear to God, he does, he pulls a straight up Sam, our dog, when the dog is, like, looking away, he's like, okay, are we done now? <laughs> watch. <laughs> Just, like, right here. So great. Here, come on, come on. So once again, here we have comes. an example of taking a very complex problem, dividing it into pieces, representing each piece <laughs> with a separate program and then using the facilities of the unix system to glue the pieces together into a coherent whole again can we stop now <laughs> computing is going to be more and more interwoven with people's lives as the years go by oh god that's so much so funny computer technology is going to have to evolve to be easier for exactly. people to use someone's like the unix system is not the end of the road in this regard but i think it's a good step along oh the way. yeah Oh, look at this graphics. I mean, this is pretty amazing. 3D animations. Dude, this was not CGI. There's no, like, there's no, like, green ping pong balls glued all over people. This is, like, real 3D. He's definitely Carl Sagan. Oh, my God. He's such Carl Sagan. Swazi, you have to watch the beginning when he, when he has, like, a five-second pause in between, in between every line on the, on the VT100 teleprompter that he refuses to like memorize. It's <laughs> so funny. He's like waiting for the text to draw. Next line. <laughs> oh. Alright. Well that was fun. I'm going to bed. Because <laughs> I want to have a nice Sunday. Um uh, I step away from the mic to breathe. I don't. I probably should. I'm sorry, did I breathe in the mic and hurt your ear? <laughs> or are you talking about yeah that guy? All right, guys, that was a lot of fun. We made it all the way through the whole movie. How long was that? 27 minutes. Wow, that's got to be that's got to be a tradition. That is definitely got to be a tradition. We have to make we have to make more funny jokes for it. So like get your jokes ready and we'll like have like some special day. You know what? You know what? When is the anniversary of the creation of of, of Unix so we can do it on that day? That would be that would be fun. This is a great video, too, by the way. It's not one we're going to watch right now, but, and here's, uh, Ryan Kernigan. This is, this is the same guy. Oh my God. The theme of today for this silly task. So then I turned. That's Brian Dr. Kernigan. Sonny, there's a, an image. That's the same guy that was in the video. That's him. No, wait, did I get that right? Yeah. That was the guy with like the. Holy cow. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, we need to do mystery science. I'm telling you, we need to do we need to do tech mystery science. No Lotte Sunday song. Good night. Let me see if I can find <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I wanna find I wanna find not Mashy, we don't want to see him anymore. Oh, wait. That's it. I think that's him. Which one is which? They don't say anything. They don't let the coders talk. <laughs> they don't let the coders talk, apparently. Structure, which simplified many aspects of I the think, I swear, I think that's him. I think this is him, but I don't know. Do you guys know? Thompson and Ritchie were aiming to keep Thompson and Ritchie. Oh wait, that's not that's Kernigan. What am I talking about? Ken Thompson. Their no, one of them is Kernigan. One of these guys is Kernigan. That 
enabled them to do a great deal with a very few primitives. I think that's him, though. I think that's him right there. I think that's him. Is that Ken? Yeah. Many aspects of the interactions between computers and people. That's Ken. Well, that's Ken Ritchie. That one I knew. I don't know why why that blew that. So that means he's not Kernigan. That's not Kernigan there. Or is it? This is definitely Ken Ritchie. I recognize him because I remember seeing his kind of thing. Ken Ritchie. I have to use a graphic browser. Kenny Ritchie. Kenneth Thomas Ritchie's. This is not who we want. Ken Ritchie. I.E. Duh. I know. I'm sorry. Um. I forget. I I I get these guys all mixed up all the time. I'm really apol. I really apologize. He looks like Charles. Smith. Brian was in the early was earlier in the movie. Oh, Brian was earlier. Which one was Brian? Because because I feel like I can get some use out of this. There's Mashy. We don't know who that guy is. What's current? That's Ken Thompson right there, is it not? Someone wants I kind of want to know. Software stands between the user and it's the a machine. Bob raid. Who's coming? Hi, guys. We're just watching the Unix OS and making fun of it. We need... This is Kernighan. Okay, that makes sense. Now, yeah, that, I definitely recognize him now. I don't know why I mix those guys all up. So, Kernighan, so here he is here. And here he is here. He, he hasn't changed at all. And he's going to tell us why we should all use awk and nothing else ever. Yeah, but he hasn't changed much. He's still the same guy. And then, so that that leaves, uh, and he, yeah, he lost weight a little bit. I wish I could. I lost some weight myself. Because sitting is stupid. Oh, people. Okay, um, what else we got? So, I I have to, I have to put, I've, I have gotten these guys mixed up so much through my whole life. Because their names come up all the time. So, like, Ken Thompson, uh, Ken Thompson was one of the guys who helped Rob Pike, uh, on Go. So instead, oh, you're gonna get in trouble. Don't say stuff like that. I agree, but, um, Ken Thompson and Rob Pike and Rob, Rob Greisimer. So, this is Richie here, and this is it's Thompson. So Thompson's the serial killer. <laughs> Ken, Ken, we don't mean any disrespect, my friend. We just, it's just, you, I hope you can laugh at that. Uh, so my stream froze. Did my stream freeze? I I shouldn't have. I hope I didn't freeze. Did I freeze? I'm sorry if I'm frozen. No. Oh, okay. Um, people keep saying that scare me. Now I'm like all over the place. Uh, all right. So 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 let's get our guys right. Let's at least make something educational here. The paint had let it back in. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Um. So Kernigan, um, so Brian Kernigan, who made Auk and C, he and Richie made C together, but his his claim to fame is Auk, and I think said, but he, actually Kernigan helped with the the Unix operating system. So I'm, I've always look, I've known about these guys forever, but I always mix them up. I always always mix them up. So I'm trying to get my head around this since we're doing it, we're having fun with them. So here he is. Here's Brian Kernigan, and he's very. Actually, there's a really fun video from him about the origin of the word grep. Yeah, about where it came from. Uh, it's on Computer File if you want to watch it. Uh, and he thinks everybody should still use awk, and I think awk is disastrously bad. Um, the Kernigan. So so so. Okay. So wait wait wait. Who are these guys? Who are these guys? These guys. Ding 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 for twenty five points. Who is this dude? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's Dennis Ritchie. Yep. In fact, I almost know it is now. That's Ken Thompson there because he's a serial killer. 
See, there he is right here. Ken Thompson with Dennis Ritchie. So there's Ritchie with no glasses. Here's Thompson. This is later in their years. So Thompson actually has done a lot of things, including uh, known for Unix, the B programming language, the Bell chess machine. Apparently he made a chess machine. Plan 9. So he actually helped do Plan 9 with Rob Pike. And that's uh, Rob Pike did did Plan Nine. Uh, if that if that uh, if that thing looks similar, that's because that's where the the uh, Rene French uh, Rob Pike's wife made the logos for Go. Uh, Grep for president, yes, uh, Ken. So this is definitely Ken. Uh, and he did, uh, yeah. So he made Grep. He's the one who made Grep. And Go. Go is his famous. He also uh, was really instrumental in UTF-8. Yep, there it is. Um, so, yeah. He, Plan 9 from Bell Labs. Yep. So, so Richie, Richie passed on. He was, I think he was the primary C developer. Um, but yeah, UTF-8, UTF uh, Pike and Thompson had a really big hand in the UTF-8. Actually, there's a fantastic email that was sent to one of the email lists uh, from Rob Pike describing the creation of Unicode or at least their modification to the IBM spec that they asked for input on and so as the story goes um, I'm really paraphrasing but uh, Thompson and Pike uh, came up with the whole idea of of uh, variable uh, length uh, Unicode code points which means you have have like eight you know eight bits and then you have like, you know, 16 and so on. Actually, the original ASCII only had seven bits because it was unsigned. Uh, and then, and then, but, but in order to get the full uh, complement of Unicode characters we have today that include, you know, planes for cling on and all kinds of things, uh, they had to have four bytes. So uh, a Unicode character code point has 32 bits. So is that right? So yeah, four byte. And um, I think I got that right. That's an int 64. I got that right. Anyway, so they actually made it so progressively add more. And thanks to them, you have your smileys and your emojis. And we have the entire Chinese language and things like that. So you can thank them for it. It's also why Go completely dominates uh, when it comes to internationalization. Uh, it's got really, really great Unicode support. In fact, I am just about to hit that problem in my little Rust program because I need to iterate over the characters. And if I cannot iterate over the Unicode code points independently, uh, I'm going to have trouble because I'm going to have to write my own algorithm to detect whether... I'm sure it exists in Rust. It has to. Because if it doesn't, I am going to have to write my own algorithm by reading each byte seeing if that byte is a, port of, a part of a Unicode code point plane that's bigger than that. And if so, read another byte or or four. Uh, that's how Unicode works. And if you don't have a library, oh God, yeah, it's crazy. If you don't have a, if you don't have a library to iterate over it, it's, it's insane. And, and so one of the greatest advantages, since I'm on this kick, uh, one of the greatest advantages of the Go language is that the fundamental unit in the entire language is what's called a rune. And a rune is automatically Unicode aware. So when you for range over, over a, a, you know, a, a text field or something, it automatically is Unicode aware. And so it will, it will increment appropriately based on, based on that. Yeah. Or three, right. Uh, but you have to, if you don't, um, if you want to actually use uh, characters instead, you know, bytes instead of runes, you have to. You can go lets you cast them, so you can cast you can cast them as bytes, and then it'll just iterate over the bytes itself. Uh, and I haven't I haven't encountered that in Rust. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do this this um, this converter um, the slug converter is because I want to see how easy it's going to be to iterate over individual runes in in Rust, and if there's a library for that, if it's built in. I know it's kind of jumping into the deep end, but but it's really important because if you can't, I'm almost positive it'll be fine, but it's supposed to be a low-level C-like language, and one of the biggest problems with C 
see this kind of thing, you have to use a library. If you don't have a library, you're screwed because you have to write that algorithm yourself. With Rust, you can turn a string into an iterator of shards with, with shards. Yeah, but can you can you make them Unicode aware? Can, how do you how do you range over a Unicode field? That's the problem, right? Because a Unicode. So, for example, if you have an emoji in the middle of your of your string, um, you cannot range over shards. It won't work. So. You have to be able to de de detect that one of those characters is in is in a different field because it, it occupies. In fact, uh, people don't know this about VI, and uh, a little bit of fun stuff to know about VI. Um, if you have trying to find something that has emojis in it, um, what do I have that has emojis in it? Um, I think I have some stuff here. Give me a second here. I have to set my opacity back. Capacity back to like, I don't know, more than that. Eight, how about that? Oh, seven. All right, so, uh, yeah, what am I thinking? I'm just going to go back here. All right, so if you, skill stack. I have some emojis. I'm going to go get you guys some emojis here. So um, I have an em emoji sheet, ancient. Um, people that know this but this is actually one of the nicer parts about vim and vi uh no emoji uh you could code segment yep 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 uh and there's actually really good so here is a here's a markdown page uh, that i have that has all the emojis in it by the way this is why i don't ever use putty anymore putty does not have emoji support somebody was saying we don't need emojis there was a sad day when they added emojis to the terminal um and you can tell that you know this font I'm using. It's completely the emojis are completely dependent on your font on your system, um, uh, but they do pretty good. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Jenny. That'd be interesting to find out. I haven't. I I only got. I only had about a, about an hour and a half. I was doing a hack the box. No, um, I was yeah. I was doing hack the box, and I was I had an an Ed situation. So we learned it like in an hour. <laughs> so I still I need to learn more Ed. Uh. You know, yeah. So what I'm trying to show you here, see this code down here? Check this. Am I in the way? Can you see this down here? Can you see this right here? Am I covering it up? There, how's that? So you see how um I'm probably right on top of it. I think I'm probably right on top of it. You know what I can do? I can actually here, I'll fix that. There we go. Better. So so here we are. Um so look at this. You watch that number jump. In fact, the only time in history that I've ever seen the number jump was when I started editing with emojis. Uh, this little dash that pops in there, you see that dash that jumps in there? That's showing you the actual offset in bytes versus code characters. So nine is the number of bytes and four is the number of runes. So watch. So position one, two, three, actually three, four, because, and that's another thing about these. So emojis take two bytes, if I got this right, yeah, and to display. Emojis take two bytes to display, uh, two, two positions, two cells, two curses cells or whatever, um, which can really mess your terminal, by the way. I mean, I've, 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 been, I've, I've been putting them in blogs before and it gets really crazy. Um, and then, but yeah, and then it's, but even that it's actually a lot more in bytes. So as you can see, it jumped up nine bytes. You see that? So it goes from byte two to byte nine <laughs> in one hop, in one hop, everything else is 10 and it, it all goes up by one after that. I wonder how much this one is. Yep. Four. So that's another, there are some that aren't as big. I'm trying to like this one, I think. Yep, two eight. So that one's only three long. Uh, yeah, this is UTF eight. All this is UTF eight. So you see this one? This one's smaller. See how it's smaller? That one's four. That one's f three. Wait, 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 wait. This is this is fun. I've been wanting to do this. So some of them are on a different plane. Uh, emojis in the terminal is bad. Were you the one? Yeah. So so if you go to two three, 
You see that? Look at that. It goes from position two to nine. That's seven bytes. Seven bytes. How can that be seven bytes? Yeah. Oh, right. Because it's because it because in sixty four. Oh God, I can't. I can't remember this. I think it's. I think it's unsigned. It's an U uh, in sixty four. That's what it is. An unsigned in sixty four, which is which is. Uh, that would be two to the eighth, right? Yeah, I think I finally got it. <laughs> I'm such a bad. I'm so bad. Dennis, last miles. He gets. He does this stuff in his sleep. I'm. I'm not them. So that just. That's interesting because this one is not as big. Look, you see that? That one's not as big. This one only goes up. That only goes from two to six. So that's just four. Um. That's only four, four bytes, and this one is seven bytes, because it's, well, yeah, well, we know that's two to eight. But what I find interesting is that this one is different. Dennis is breathing code; <laughs> he definitely does. Uh, dislike this concept. Unicode segmentation in the center. Um, I missed some comments that I'm reading back. I'm going to bed. Um, so wait here two five so what why is it on 20 oh that's i spazzed for a second all right so two to five so that's three bytes long so this emoji is three bytes long and you, if you look if you look at the wikipedia for unicode code planes seriously it's really interesting stuff i love that stuff so you can go look at the Unicode code planes and they have different planes based on uh, the number of characters you can use. Um, exactly because it's used to have a variable code length. Right. When well, we talked about that earlier. Um, oh, Bakari. Corona. Oh, gosh. Which is somehow like Python is using emojis. Uh, hi. Hi, Bakari. Como se va? So here we go. We have, so that's five, two to five, three, four, five. So that's the three byte. So the coffee is three byte. That's three byte. This is the biggest one. This wins the cake. That means that that ribbon, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sleepy too. I'm going to bed. <laughs> so the ribbon is one of the latter additions to the emojis because look at the stuff that's new uses almost all four bytes every time. I mean, that's not right. All eight bytes, sixty-four bits. All sixty-four bits. So that would be, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really cool. Hey, look at you. So that one's six. That one's that's four. That one's four. This one is interesting. That one's three. It's probably why it's not supported. Eight. No, eight is two to eight. That's seven. Wow. So that's four bytes, another four bytes, four bytes, four bytes, four bytes, four bytes. Zany is four bytes. These are all going to be 40 because these are like standard ones. Yep. Anyway, uh, is it in 32? It is in 32. Thank you. I got it wrong. I thought it was a 64. It's a UN32 in Golang. A rune is exactly the same as a UN32, unsighted integer, 32 bit integer. Um, and so, yeah, I did a lot of work with that because I was making a, a language protocol that used um, Unicode as um, segment separations, much like VT100 escape sequences, sometimes called ANSI escape sequences. The proper term is VT100, apparently. Uh, the guy got turned into a squirt gun and there is still no official skateboard emoji. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Unicode's 32 bit. Yep. That makes sense. That, that makes me sense. All right. I mean, this has been a real fun trip down memory lane. Uh, I still can't tell you who is Dennis Ritchie and who's Brian Kernigan. Uh, actually Kernigan, I'll be able to recognize now, but Ritchie, I know has passed. And so Thompson is still kicking and made go uh, with Pike.
Pike was a, uh, was with them uh, at Bell Labs for some time, and I don't know. I think Pike was kind of younger than them. If I if I follow their association with each other, and that kind of guys that talk about it a lot on on the YouTube. <laughs> but but uh, but yeah. So where is Pike? There he is. And then Grissomer was the young buck. And he's the Java guy. And I don't think he has a thing. Nope. Yeah, he doesn't have a thing. He's pretty young. Uh, he's the Java guy. Grissomer came from the Java background. Biking Ken Thompson. Of course, Ken Thompson uh, started Unix uh, with the other guys. But Richie invented the C language. Pike is a Canadian programmer and author. He is best known for his work on a Go programming language at Bell Labs. And at Bell Labs. He was a member of the Unix team. Uh, and he was involved in creation of Plan 9 from Bell Labs. So, so yeah. And Rob's really, really great. I love listening to him talk. His, his wife is the one who made um, the, the Go Gopher. She's super good. You know what's funny? is how many really great techs, technologists, have married artist wives. And they just get along. I, I, I have, there's so many similarities to the relationship between he and, and my, my wife and I. My wife's a, an artist. Um, Kernigan didn't work on Golang, no. Tam, Thompson did. Yeah, Thompson. Is it not funny? I gotta say, for some reason, technologists get along really well with artists and so if you can find i don't i can't completely fully explain it but there is some natural pairing uh yeah i think i think that's what it is i think it's that you don't step on each other's toes but at the same time you are both creative and your brains work kind of in the same way but in different ways enough for it to be interesting i can't or it's just that they're both bipolar. Could be two sides of the same half. Late night with David Letterman. I don't. He was actually on the television with Late Night David Letterman. Author and illustrator, both the U.S. and Australia. Hmm. I think it might be. Hey, there's the midnight hour ringing. To go to bed. Tell me to go to bed. Now Richie's the one that I can never spot though in a crowd but I guess I don't Richie's gone though what am I talking about Ken Thompson's the one you don't see around much does he ever get around does our does our does our friend who looks like a serial killer get around much yeah it is time to go to bed hey Bob see you later buddy I'm going to bed myself um I was searching for Bob because I thought of you. Um, I want to search for Ken Thompson. I've never seen Ken Thompson speak ever. I, I've talked. I love the YouTube because I can. He does look like Guilfoyle. I almost wonder if it's modeled after him because uh, he's like very low key and everything. I mean, Kernigan's all over the place talking to everybody. Um, Ken Thompson interview. Brennan Kernigan interviews Ken Thompson. Well, thank you. So, he still uh, looks like a cellular killer. And on the <laughs> sucker who volunteered to run this thing. Thank you. The Vintage Computer Federation. Thank you. Um, what a, a bunch of, of geeks. Credit, because of 40, 50, 60 volunteers year round that this happens, I could do nothing alone. I used to. And that's like a, used, when I did it alone, I had hair. Uh, um. So our hashtag throughout the weekend is VCF East. Please use it. And that's our website. Uh, somebody hashtag advantage. nerd jokes. Nobody's <laughs> Here, I'll do it. Okay. I volunteer myself. Uh, um, mm, okay. so how many we got to love it. Dan T-shirt tucked in the belt. Classic. Okay. So Dan Roganti was one of our original members of our group like in 2005. Uh, last year he couldn't make it here because he was fighting stage 4 cancer. And unfortunately, he did pass away. His daughters are here. I know he'd be very proud of that. Uh, Dan used to design all our old T-shirts, all the old, really <laughs> awesome T-shirts. If anybody has one, because of Dan. So we dedicate oh, God. to my friend Dan. 
interpretive artist, not so much. This is probably true, yeah. Infowage Science Center for hosting us, uh, Hackaday, our sponsor. Um, a few days ago, called a Vax 9000. It is the computationally and physically largest computer deck ever built. There were about three dozen ever made, and we got the last one. It was in service six months ago by an Air Force defense contractor in Colorado. Holy won't cow. won't what they did with it. Um, our policy is we only accept donations. We do not purchase our... Oh, my God. Because tomorrow is Joe DeCure from Atari little, you know, Yule Lager or something like that. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we don't need They that. got the last um, one down. So Ken and I uh, were at Bell Labs together a very, very long time ago. Uh, he arrived at Bell Labs in the mid-60s. I'll let him say more about that. That would be I fun. As a, a summer in uh, a system that we all know and love and have used for a very, very long time. Um, he's been recognized for that with all kinds of awards, and I will not embarrass him by going through too many of them, uh, but it includes things like the uh, he's like Award. And he's the like the original Greybeard, and Japan Prize. yeah, uh, he looks like he wants to kill you. Eat the marrow of your bones to power his unix brain. I mean, he's, he's a wonderful game. guy, probably. But I, you have, I have no doubt. Short fire beard with long with collar versus long light beard with shirt. So he literally uh, has exactly the same hairstyle. Ken, why don't you tell us a little Who's bit judging me? Like Somebody's you judging me. Oh yeah. T-shirt. Oh uh, yeah. I, I I was in school in uh, Berkeley, and. I was uh, Berkeley, of uh, course. I don't know if the can I just say something. People who go to Berkeley are automatically like overcharged with condescension. <laughs> I have no idea why this is. I keep running into people from Berkeley who all have a similar attitude. It is just insane. Um, still has a, a a boatload of swagger. He really does, does he not? It applies, but I was a professional student. Yeah. Right? I just. I just drifted along. That's I, yeah. You know, rolled in class. I got an electrical engineering degree, but it was easy because <laughs> uh, I was an electrical hobbyist for essentially ten years before that. And uh, but I consumed computers. You know, I loved them. You know. Yep. Uh, he. he I, we just there. It's confirmed right now. He just said he ate computers and small children. <laughs> I'm just and, having and fun. Time, I'm just having computer fun. Computer science curriculum. At, at oh boy! Please no. So uh, <laughs> it was being invented, and uh, th th there's big recruiting towards the end of that year where uh, all the companies come. All right, time for us to go. I did. I needed to watch some more videos. Program and somebody just wander <laughs> over, look in, and 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 choose. You know, you know, any one of the combinatorics to find out who you're going to fight. And so Twice over was kind of the budget. Who you're going to fight, you hear that? We got it before two, you type one, two, plus, and it would say four, you know, whatever it was. McElroy sat there. Uh, oh my gosh, I got to watch this. Only had Just not tonight, I'm going to fall asleep. For a while, terminal, and they said if you wanted to be on the what did you do on your Saturday night? Oh, I sat and watched a bunch so of I old. My car, drove all the way out to Kennedy, gave this, this <laughs> old farts talking you know, about. If you don't I I'm not saying anything and, bad about him. Uh, I'm just, I was just, we were just having, Bob, you need to know, uh, it was kind of a running joke because, because in the other video in the seventies, uh, he looks like it, scary. And he's uh, obviously a very uh, kind man. And so, yeah, I can, uh, the post wrote a story on it. It was, it was a very good story. Yeah. We were watching him. I'm more scared of George store. Uh, George, George, I can never say his name. How do you say C plus plus guy's name? <laughs> I can never, I can never say his name. I try so hard. Storstrup, Storstrup, Storstrup. It's time for me to go to bed. Who should we raid, or at least relax or something? Besides being here with you nutballs. Um, who should I, who should I raid? I was joking. Oh, right, right. Uh, uh, me. Uh, I'm, I know. I'm late too. I we are not watching the C plus plus guy. No. <laughs> Bjorn, 
He's he's really funny, but my God, he's exactly like the language. No offense. Um. All right. So, annular solar eclipse. Thirty-five minutes later, Bikari. Um. All right. Is there anybody we can uh, left worth rate? Yeah. Let's please rate a gamer. Somebody find us a gamer worth rating. I don't even care. I don't even care. Twitch top. These are just all the top gamers. I mean, all the top. Oh, Strager's got a high watching rate down there. Yeah. Strager's much more interesting than watching a bunch of old farts. <laughs> we should rate Strager. He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Who else we got? I kind of want to... I mean, I, I loved Hikari Knight. I loved rating him the other day. Can we please not rate... Uh, can we rate somebody not in, in Science and Tech? Who is Summit 1G? I don't know who that is. Um, Summit 1G is... Oh, God. Really? You guys won't get to say anything if you go in there. Um... I mean, I'm not opposed to it, but who should we raid? Twitch.tv to end out this day. Actually, I kind of want to find some. I mean, they're just going to go to bed, too. There's not very many Unix streamers, to tell you the truth. Uh, and just in general, I've, had, I've noticed that's a problem. Uh, following browse. No, I don't want to browse. Failed to load module. What does that mean? Firefox. Science and tech. Burke Black, who's that? Oh, wait, there's me being silly. I'm like laughing and I'm like, hey, that's me. Um, Who else we got over here? Uh, 1.4. Burke Black? All right, I trust you. Since I don't know how to raid from Twitch. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I have forgotten completely how to raid from Twitch. Bob Ross, he's he's not here anymore, is he? Bob 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 boo be boo boo do do. Dresses like a pirate. Means Twitch devs are bad. I have to click here so I can do the raid. 43 viewers is ready are ready to go. Hey, thanks for joining me for this crazy day. I may be back a little bit tomorrow, but for the most part, I'm going to be off tomorrow reading books and stuff. Uh, I'm going to read some more of my Innovator's book and uh, maybe writing in the morning. Guys, have a great night. Have a happy day tomorrow. To all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day, apparently. It's Father's Day. I am a bad son. I need to get to my father and tell him hello. Uh, and we'll take care and see you later. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs>